Okay, here we go. The 2100 total, guys. And also the 93 fletching as well. So you might be wondering, what am I fletching for, right? So I want to be able to get to 95. I'm kind of close, two levels off, so that I can fletch Dragon Darts. They're going to be really nice to use at like raids, uh, particularly. But that is an amazing uh, milestone, I gotta say. 2100 total on this guy. I never thought I would hit 2000. And it's crazy that I've hit <laughs> 2100, okay? Pretty proud of uh, the skill and achievements on here, nonetheless. I see the corpse getting hit a bit, but... Alright, there you go. I seem to have killed the core. Yep, it works. Yeah, the cannon can apparently still kill the core while it's in mid-flight, so... This is kill number 10 now. We're hitting uh, double digits. And the drop is uh, Rune Knight Bolts. Haven't gotten anything uh, per you know, particularly interesting yet. Alright, let's pick up uh, the leftover sharks. Okay, magic logs. That's my first magic log drop. What are you on about? Oh, yes! Finally, yo! My first big boy drop. Mmm, and on 18th kill. That should make my money back, maybe. Probably not. I am going to be changing my spawn point to Edgeville for 5 million coins. It's going to be incredibly worth it because the spawn point is relatively close to the Edgeville bank. So that way when I do my suiciding, I can, you know, bank slightly faster. In the long run, I'll definitely save quite a bit of time, so it's worth the investment. Oh my goodness. Another Onyx Bolt, nice. We got uh, two. Unexposed drops so far uh, in 27 kills. Pretty good. Cannonball drop. Nice. My first cannonball drop. That will be the last kill of the day. I did so many kills. And we get cannonballs as well. So 30 KC. That's a nice number to end on. And I gotta say, I am quite comfortable uh, doing this boss now. Still need to do quite a bit more kills in order to perfect the muscle memory for this boss. Pretty enjoyable at the moment, so I'm looking forward to, you know, going back to Corp again another day. On the last episode, I got asked a lot of questions about Corporal Beast. Specifically, you know, solo Corporal Beast. A lot of people are also giving suggestions, but a lot of times they were pretty contradictory to what I was actually doing. And anyways, after, uh, you know, doing Corporal Beast, uh, getting the 30 kills, I have pretty much perfected uh, my setup, and it's probably going to be... The setup that I'll be using for the remainder, you know, of the Corporal Beast kills. So anyways, I want to make sure I explain in full detail what actually goes on. So that I can avoid any uh, misunderstanding and confusion. So anyways, I'm going to talk in detail from prepping the Corporal Beast all the way to killing it. The first phase is lowering the Corporal Beast's stats. The second phase is suiciding the food on the ground so that you can have enough food for the actual fight. And then the third phase is actually killing the boss. So let's talk about the first phase, getting the boss's stats down to the desired stats. So the goal of this phase is to reduce Corporal Beast's defense to zero. And to do that, it's simple. You need the Dragon Warhammer spec. So right here, this setup gives me the highest chance of landing Dragon Warhammer specs. And I want to land the spec five times. At that point, the Corporal Beast's defense will be around 20%. And how are you going to get the remaining 20% down? It's simple, you switch over to the art light, okay? So the art light, every time it lands a special, it will reduce the opponent's defense by 5%. 10% is a demon, Corporal Beast is not a demon, so it's 5%. So that means you need to land four art light specs on the boss after your Dragon Warhammer hits, and that way the Corporal Beast's defense will be drained to zero. And also his attack and strength will also be reduced by the 5% uh, for each spec as well, so its offensive stats are slightly lowered as well. So once I finish specking the Corporal Beast down to zero defense, I move on to the suiciding phase. So the suiciding phase varies a bit because it really just depends on how much food was already on the ground. So when I start off Corporal Beast from scratch, it would be uh, three inventories of food, two sharks inventory and one quam barn inventory. And uh, depending on how many suicide, I also use the dark light spec at the same time as well. That way, I can just lower the corporal beast's uh, attack and strength a little bit more, just to make the fight a little bit easier. And once the suiciding part is done, and then you go to the final kill. And this part is where I switch into 
this gear right here okay so this is the gear that I use to actually kill Corporal Beast so a lot of people were saying oh no don't bring uh, the Armadale because it actually lowers your accuracy but we explained earlier that the whole point of the prepping is to reduce Corporal Beast's defense to absolutely zero so it doesn't matter that the Armadale equipment lowers your accuracy because Corporal Beast's defense is zero anyways so you're always basically gonna land and also, I bring with me the Odium Ward and the Cold Iwan. Why the Odium Ward? Why the Cold Iwan? I will show you. If I put these two on, look at my magic defense. 189. That's a big deal. So, normally it's 145. Okay? And Corporal Beast, his main attack is basically magic. So, you really want to have the best magic defense possible. The Odium War and Cold Iwan switch is incredibly useful for the fight just because I get to evade a lot more of Corporal Beast's magic attack and that is essential to fast kills and survivability. So I can switch from the Zami Spear to the Odium Ward and Cold Iwan in between hits as you can see in the video right now. That way I can do maximum damage and then when Corporal Beast attacks I have the maximum defense to tank the hits. And also when I am in the eating phase, I can also put on the switch too and that way I don't get hit as much. Just because when you're eating, you can't attack anyway, so you might as well have the best defense. And also when I need to pick up food on the ground, I just wear that as well. So that way I can take more hits since I can't even attack when I'm, you know, looting food. I initially started using the Din's Bulwark as like the tank switch instead, but I realized that the Din's Bulwark is nowhere as good as uh, the current setup because Din's Bulwark as you can see has less magic defense by a lot and even the defensive mode which reduces incoming damage by 20% is not good because when you use that defensive mode the moment you switch out of that shield you cannot attack for the next 4.8 seconds and that sucks because that means the kill just becomes a lot slower so so throughout this video, uh, before this clip and after this clip, you'll see that I have uh, the Banos Gossler and actually, you know, use it quite a bit. Uh, starting today though, I'm not using the Banos Gossler anymore at Corporal Beast just because I realized that the Banos Gossler is just not useful for me at all at Corporal Beast, okay? So the main reason you want to use the Banos Gossler at Corporal Beast uh, is to lower the Corporal Beast's magic stats. So that way his magic attack, if you lower enough, can't even hit you. It'll miss and the damage it'll do to you is very minimal. Now there is a catch, okay? In order for the Band of to actually lower the magic stat of an opponent, their attack strength and defense stats has to be zero first, okay? So the best way to lower Corporal Beast's attack strength and defense to zero is actually with the Art Light. It is undoubtedly better than the Banos Gossler when it comes to lowering the melee stats of Corporal Beast. Now, in order for the Art Light to lower Corporal Beast's melee stats to zero, you actually have to spec the boss about 20 to 22 times, depending on how fast you do it. And unfortunately, specking that many times takes way, way too long. So yeah, that would just make the prep time to you know kill Corporal Beast way, way too long for a regular Iron Man. So Ultimate Ironmans would use this because they actually need to lower the Corporal Beast's magic stats because you know their supply is limited in the inventory and they can't afford a suicide and drop food on the ground like normal Ironman can. So Ultimate Ironmans have to do that method and use the BGS but for them they only get up to maximum 4 kills a trip more like realistically probably 3. Now for me though, I don't even have to use the Bandos Gossel I realize. All I really need to do is 5 Dragon Warhammer specs and 4 All Light specs just to lower the boss's defense to zero and the rest doesn't really matter. And with my method, I'm getting basically 1 Corporal Beast kill every 10 minutes. So that's about 6 kills an hour. So if I use the Bandos Gossel, it actually would slow me down. So hopefully this explains everything that you wanted to know about Corp, why I do it this way and uh, Clear any confusions. Hmm. Oh, yes! Well, we just got kind of our first uh, ever unique item. Huh. <laughs> A spear shield, obviously. Not blessed though. Alright. This is uh, kill number 38. Another Onyx Bolt drop. Damn, dude, that's insane. That is a lot of Onyx Bolts. 
So yeah, four Onyx Bowls today, man. Really good cash. <laughs> yes. Oh. Oh my God. I accidentally forgot to uh, drop food. But uh, I still managed to get the kill. <laughs> God damn. Only had like uh, 20 food on the ground or something. Jesus. That was way too clutch. Gotta make sure, you know, to drop the food every time. Didn't use that much food. Mystic Air Staff this time. Okay, we've uh, hit over 50 KC now. Pretty, pretty good. Luckily, it's the weekend, so, you know, I'm able to spend quite a bit of hours on uh, this type of grind. Dang, I like use like just my inventory and a little bit of food on the ground. Oh no, not again with this rare drop stuff. Another loop path and stupid gems. That's my second one. Oh, 35 BGS back. Oh my god, that might have been uh, the max. All right, that's gonna be a KC60 for some teak planks. Never gotten that actually on here, but that's a good stopping point though. Uh, we've gone basically 30 kills uh, a day uh, the past two days. So yeah, not bad. But this time around, these kills are going by around like 10 minutes prep to kill time. So it's pretty damn fast at this point. Yeah, we've got a long ways to go before we can get a drop. <laughs> Woo. Oh my god! Oh my god! Seriously? <laughs> I actually got an Onyx drop. That's just fucking hilarious, man. <laughs> oh my god. Where was this onyx when I needed uh, it for my uh, ammo torture? So I decided to bring to you guys another video rather quickly. I think this was within like two or three days. Normally it's like four to five days, I would say. But I wanted to get a lot of the uh, Corporal Beast beginning content out of the way and also like the information stuff regarding like the grind out of the way. So then we're all on the same page, you know, I want to Make sure everyone knows what's going on uh, regarding the Corporal Beast. Corporal Beast grind is uh, going to be very time consuming and the amount of clips that I'll be able to get from it is from my experience as a content creator very minimal. So yeah, I hope to see you guys within like 4 to 5 days. So I am enjoying Corporal Beast so I'll definitely be grinding this boss for quite a while. Hopefully, you know, by the time I get bored we'll have like a spirit shield or something. So right now, I'm still not sure how to blend in the Corporal Beast grind with the Raid grind, the God Wars grind uh, with the limited time that I have, so I hope to figure that type of schedule out soon within like this week and then maybe we'll have like a, a good pattern of videos once again. If you want to stay up to date with the series, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And thank you guys so much for watching as usual and I hope to see you guys soon with another video in a few days. Take care guys.